Hi, Richie. Hi, Sin. Hi, everyone. So, what everyone is about to hear right now is part three <laughs> of a series called All the Screams That Followed, <laughs> which is found on patreon.com slash Lore. And in this series, uh, we recorded the making of the solo Willem Lore. Is it out yet? The solo Willem Lore? No, not yet. This may okay. be released before or after. We'll see. Yeah. Do you have any comments about this exciting five and a half part series that we recorded? I didn't even remember there were five parts. Honestly, I just remember a sense of regret and shame. There's actually five and a half. Jesus. <laughs> Why we're releasing part three specifically on YouTube? You're using we again. Like... <laughs> Why we're releasing part three specifically on YouTube? It's because it has a very important piece of Snack Covenant lore history. And you'll understand which piece it is once you hear it. <laughs> Hi, Richie. How are you today? Good. It's all good. How are you? Excellent. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what is the name of this Deadcaster room today? All the screams that follow Bergen with the making of part three. Oh my god. What does that mean? It means we're recording another great episode about <laughs> Willem Bergenworth. <laughs> Yay! Because that's what you've called this file. What did I call this file? You called it Bill Bergenworth, so it looks like that's his name. <laughs> also, you, you've given me the version that's got track changes on it, so I can see your notes to yourself, and one of them is how to say this fancy. <laughs> yes, that's one of the questions for you later. And you misspelled how. <laughs> H-W-O, I see. <laughs> Bully. <laughs> okay. So, okay. in this exciting new series, what we're trying to do is, <laughs> I wanted to make, like, solo lore for a while, but it's been hard yeah. because I haven't heard, like, super inspiring copyright-free music. So I was like, you know yeah. what? First I'll make it, and then yeah. I'll listen to the music, and I will adapt the two. Yeah. Like, I'm doing it backward. Yeah. The other problem is that you have a lot of interesting things to say, but that Richie guy ruins all the podcasts and just doesn't take you seriously. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so Rich has been helping me uh, construct this lore, and it's been very helpful so far. I learned that yeah. I don't need to construct a full biography of Willem to have lore. Yeah. Yeah. I can use yeah. in-game information. I can speculate in between and connect things, but I don't have to start from yeah. naming the hospital in which Willem was born. Correct. Yeah, which is very useful. Martin Ligarius Memorial Hospital. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Based on the conversation we've had before, mm -hmm. I made like a text, and we're going to go through the text and see what you think. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the things we talked about, I found them a little too, like, in terms of the making of, like, I thought about it and I'm like, it's going to be like, if I do flashbacks and this and that, it's going to, it's possible it's just going to be time consuming. And I'm like, I'm old and I'm tired. I yeah. may not necessarily have the time and energy to do an old time consuming lore. So I decided to go more straightforward. Lee? Okay. 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 So I was thinking of starting with I don't know, I still wanna put a biography for a man with no biography somewhere. Maybe just like as a quote in the beginning. Who says that quote? Who said it? Was it you or me? Or was it together? I don't remember. Maybe we can say like Dostoevsky said it. People won't check, right? We might have said it in Russian and it was translated wrong. <laughs> there we go. 
he might have said it in his canonical Japanese first language that he wrote his books in. Yeah. Dostoevsky in the canonical Japanese. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, we'll think about that one. So I separated it into parts, but I don't know if the actual like part will appear in the mm-hmm. lore. But basically, this is how I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you there? Yeah. Okay, so the first part is William Youth and University. So it starts off with, uh, in his youth, Master William was fascinated with the natural world. His fascination led him to pursue a career in academia. After completing his studies, he settled down in Bergenworth, where he took a job at Bergenworth University. Does that sound about right? So what, far? as narration or just as like an outline of his life? Both. Yeah, it, it's fine. Yeah. What would you change? Oh, if I, if I were reading it out loud, I'd probably just change the language a little. Yeah, like what? Oh, because like if you were talking, if he's working at Bergenworth, you'd say like a position, not a job. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. That's what it. That's what I need you to do, Richie, because you are a scholar of Birkenworth. Took a position. Class of twenty seventeen. <laughs> Actually, class class of two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, twenty eleven, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, and twenty twenty. Why? Because I just stayed at the same university from my like, oh. <laughs> from my undergraduate through to my doctorate and then my teaching certification. I just never left. I've outlasted most of the staff. Oh my god! I know. I just need to get a job there, and it'll be like okay. It's just my life now. Okay, so yeah, so it's just like you will come full circle. That's a third of my life at the one university. I have squatters' rights. I can just like live there now. You know how there's no one in the university? Maybe the university was like closed down and abandoned, but Willem is still there, sitting in the linarium, chilling. It's like, go home, Willem. No, I must meditate to the moon. Willem, you will not get enlightened this way. Bring me hot buckets. I think we should get the topic. Okay. 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 What else would you change in this first? Uh... Well, he wasn't called Master Willem in his youth. <laughs> In his <laughs> What's his name? Maybe he was first name Master yeah, Willem. His parents Willem. called him Master Willem. <laughs> and he's like, well fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, you know in Doctor Who there's the master, yeah. right? Do you think the master is actually Master Willem reincarnated? <sighs> Well, the the master at one point was a, a desiccated skeleton man. Oh yeah, so, yeah, twice actually. Was this like in the old ones? Yeah, because um, uh, when <laughs> when when um, he he disappeared after the the cause base. Okay, the master was like in pretty much like half the the John Pertwee stories, right? Mm-hmm. He was like a recurring villain because they were mostly set on Earth, so they had to come up with the reason aliens were showing up. Okay. And then the actor that the actor that played him died Aww. before they could like finish the story, so they he just basically stopped showing up. Mm. Um, but then they brought him back later on in one of the Tom Baker ones, and the idea is that like he'd regenerated too many times and run out of energy, so he was just like a zombie. He was like this sort of like corpse thing. He looked like Skeletor. That's in the new ones, no? Well, no, they did that again, but okay, this is okay. like the first. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and he, he was he was trying to um, steal the power of the Eye of Harmony to get a new regeneration cycle, and then then he um, he sto- he was able to like transfer his essence into the body of someone else, and he kept going that way. Mm-hmm. And then in the in the Paul McGann TV movie, he was a pile of goo. And then that possessed uh, the body of a paramedic played by Eric Roberts. Fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> I deliberately made that as long and as tedious as possible. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. What would you change here so far? Um, well, maybe you would, you would specify what he studied. What did he study? Um... 
Maybe like his fascination led him to pursue a career in academia, hoping to uncover the mysteries of life. I don't know. Also, like after completing his study, he settled down in Bergenworth. Like that, he didn't. No, but he took a position like that is him settling down at Bergenworth. They're not two separate things. Okay, so we. I could just say after completing his studies, he took a position at Bergenworth University. We could just say that, like he, um, uh, his career led to him becoming the provost of Bergenworth University. Ah, oh. so then I'll put this here. So this is this answers my other question: how to say this fancily? Fancily, fancily sounds like like some. Japanese-only Famicom game that I would find the ROM of. <laughs> and the title screen would just be like a random anime girl on a robot, and I wouldn't know what to do. Like, well, that was fancily. <laughs> That's beautiful. Is fancily a new member of the Snack Covenant family? I think you should keep typing. Okay. 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 So would you change anything else about these first three sentences? Um, maybe like as a youth, Willem was fascinated by the natural world rather than his youth. As, as yeah. a youth? As a youth. Okay, that sounds yeah. fancy. Okay. What else? This is the thing, because like, I could write this out fancily, but I don't want to say it fancily, because then I sound like... Like a what? I sound like a bad Vardy impression. It's like, as a youth, Willem was... Whereas the usual way I'm talking is like, okay, here's Willem. Here's, okay, yeah. Sid, Sid, focus, here's Willem. <laughs> In his very sad youth, Willem was sad. <laughs> so how would you write this whole thing fancily, then? This is why you're here, Richie. Just, like, can I edit this document? Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize I could edit the document. Okay. Aren't you supposed to like not start sentences with like this or that or yeah, it? Yeah, but which is a shit. Uh, Richie, this is real lore we're doing. We're reading it out loud. It doesn't matter. Uh, I see. You. Okay. Yeah. Oh, do you hear that sound? It's uh my dryer singing a song. <laughs> song of the dryers. It's mating call. Yeah. Calling out to other dryers they mate during the winter. <laughs> the dry dries pair off during the winter and they stay that way for the rest of their lives, looking after a, a clutch of dryer eggs. No, I think that the dryer and the washer pair up during the winter and stay together forever. That's how it is. They're both like right there. Look, there's a washer and a dryer, and they together forever. <laughs> okay. As a youth, Willem developed a fascination with the natural world. This led him to pursue an academic career in the natural sciences, and he rose through the ranks to become the provost of Dignity to City. The provost University. of Dignity City University. <laughs> we don't need Vardy, we just need you to imitate his voice and say No like, one can tell the difference! It's a waste of time! <laughs> no, 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 so, so we could we could just have you speak <laughs> 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 Maybe then when real Vardy came on people thought it was a joke, so now that it's a joke maybe they'll think you're the real Vardy Makes sense to me So now we go on to the talking about the labyrinth and how he discovered them. Yeah. You think I don't think he discovered the labyrinth. No, no, but what I want to say is that like okay, the labyrinth were common knowledge, but he was the one that was like, "Okay, let's go. Let's go to the labyrinth, everyone. Come on. Come on, let's go." Why why do you think it was common knowledge? I feel like people knew about them. Like there's a giant fucking labyrinth everywhere. Like you're supposed to know about it. Like it's not, you know? No, they didn't know about it. That's the whole point. So nobody knew about it? The Yarnamites might have known about it, but Bergenworth did. Yeah. Well, but but do, do, do you understand what Forbidden Woods actually is? 
What is the Forbidden Woods? The Forbidden Woods is the Bergenworth excavation site. That's why there's the giant tombstones everywhere, because they were digging it up and they dug out, like, part of the labyrinth. Yeah, but, like... Yeah. That's why there's all like, the people... people would have to... Okay, but people knew that if you dig there, you get to the labyrinth. No, they didn't. They didn't, but then what led them to dig the, that specifically? Then no, they were they were the Yarnum the Bergenworth were like studying the history of Yarnum and unearthed labyrinth. Like they didn't know it was there. Okay, so let's do that. Bergenworth were studying the history of Yarnum and what uncovered the labyrinth. I like how you're called Sinclair Law on this as two words, like it's your full name. That's like if you know a Kojima name. <laughs> I'm, I'm like trying to work, and then it's like, boop, boop, boop. Richie, this is Law Girl. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> help me be Tom Dollar, bitch. <laughs> okay, hang on. I could say, like, um, uh, we'll just say in its latter years, Bergenworth. Group of its scholars undertook. Oh, fancy! Undertook a survey of the area. Reminds me of um the guy who excavated Troy. Heinrich Schliemann. Oh, I don't know about that guy. Okay, do you want to? We'll, we'll, okay, we'll talk about Heinrich Schliemann because maybe that's like he'd be a good model for Willem if you wanted to come up with a fake biography. Okay. Okay. okay so, yeah. Go on. You know, like the 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 Trojan War, like the Iliad. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Um, for a very long time, like we had that poem, but people assumed like this is just a myth. It doesn't actually. It never like wasn't describing anything that actually happened. And there was a guy called Heinrich Schliemann, who became completely obsessed with like, no, no, I think it did happen. Like it, it has to have been a real thing. And like he he was one of those like, um massively wealthy like obsessives and he could afford to do it so he okay. just researched and researched and researched like what the fuck was going on with it with the trojan war and he figured out where he thought troy would have been and he organized a dig there and they did actually eventually find the ruins of troy oh my god on the yeah because he was just obsessed with the iliad <laughs> The, the, pro- the problem is that because he was doing it by himself and he wasn't attached to a university or anything like that, it's a very bad dig and they actually wrecked a bunch of stuff. Because he they he was just basically like grabbing anyone who would dig and got them to do it for him. Uh. But yeah, that that's so I guess maybe that's like that. Like maybe Willem had heard stories about Yarnum and he was wondering about like what was going on there. So how do you add that in this paragraph? Like maybe we'll say, say like, like um in the latter years of Bergenworth. We'll just say Bergenworth undertook. Isolated city. The isolated city of Newark. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful, Richie. Oh my god, I'm so jelly. Yeah, but- I could never write like that. We can write in like three languages. So like <laughs> sweet thing. <laughs> um Did I tell you I'm making another manual at work now, but this is like my greatest challenge yet because I have to make one big manual using four different manuals made by like four different people that have different information, but some of the information is inaccurate. Like <laughs> Following like the meetings that we had, I have to pick out the right information basically and the useful information from each manual <laughs> to make one giant man. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I think I have a passion for making manuals. Did I tell you that? Is it gonna go on your resume? <laughs> it's a really cute like detail for someone. Like I just really love making manuals. I do. Yeah. Yeah, our research assistant manual is nearing 100 pages wow that's so good thank you okay so um so how do you insert here like that the digging ground became forbidden woods would you insert it here or later in- that doesn't happen yet so they didn't dig 
yet or go go down yet. They just like found it. That seems to be what happened. Yeah, they were digging and then oh hey. Okay. So okay. So then uh Do you remember Bone Kickers? What's that? It was a very short lived BBC series about sexy archaeologists. It was about what? 10 years ago. Yeah. It was like, it was, if you imagine, like, kind of like CSI, but they're archaeologists, but they're all like, like really sexy, glamorous archaeologists who like smolder and glare into the distance about archaeology. That's amazing. I need to watch it. Is it like Charlie's Angels? No, no, it was, it was kind of, it was like a, like a really glamorous sort of like. <laughs> What secrets lie beneath us? Oh my god! So like Tomb Raider, kind of. Yeah, I, I remember it was on, and at the time I was I was going out with a medievalist, and she's like, "It's not like this at all." <laughs> this is the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> was this was this founded by a school of archaeology trying to get more students to join? No, it was the BBC <laughs> realizing that like. No, nothing makes me sadder than watching the gradual devolution of the BBC into a channel that's actually kind of glamorous. Oh. <sighs> okay, thank you, Richie. Yes. Okay, so now what I want to say is that, so they they went, because I don't really quite understand how the labyrinths work. So in my head, it's like they went down to the labyrinths and they're like, Oh shit, there's like Thumerians, there's like monsters here and this and that. Y'all, we need to hire some people to help us. That seems to be roughly what happened, yeah. I mean, they, they never tell you what the deal with the hunters is, but I think that's the, the safest explanation, is that like they hired... Okay, well, we'll say like... Because the next sentences you see is what I'm trying to say in the next three do, sentences. Do you want to make here. the assumption that Yarnum always had a beast problem even before the Healing Church? Oh, Jesus. And that's why they had hunters. No. Yeah. Uh, I think that's reasonable. Mm. Like, what I want to do is... Uh, well, I, ta- I actually I talk about it later. Like, you mentioned that, like... I just... Uh, I just don't know what Willem was thinking, you know? Like, I'm trying to make it sort of from his Do you want me to lay it out for you, then? Yeah. Okay, you know how the people in Yarnum are all, like, hairy and have distended limbs, right? Irritatingly, this is only in one of the, like, art books, but if you assume the art book is canon because it's from From Software, right? They okay. specify everyone in Yarnum before the Healing Church always looked like that. They were always, like, half-beast people. And that was, they called it, it was called the Yarnum look. It's like you could always, that's because the city was insular, so you could say, like, oh, right. if someone from Yarnum was outside or you were dealing with people from Yarnum, you could tell because they had, like, the one arm that was longer than the other and they had all the fur on their face. Right. You know how we've talked about Bloodborne so much? I don't know how you do it. I can't contain all the information in my brain, so some of it yeah. gets erased. And now, yeah, you're, yeah. you told me about this. So if it gets erased and replaced with just Baby Yoda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Okay. Okay. So then, no. So then, <laughs> it's just like I imagine it's like defragmenting a computer, and it's like your memory, and it's like thirty percent of this space is just. <laughs> Okay, so the, the, the sentences that I highlighted, can you change them into, like, more accurately what's going on? Which sentence did you highlight? I can't see. Can you see it, what I highlighted? No? Like, oh, realizing they could just, explore the library. Okay, yeah. Like, all right. Willem, well, yeah. starting at Willem and... Yeah. yeah. Corvo is here. Corvo, did you always have the Scottish fault look? <laughs> Exploring the labyrinth of Scottish Maybe you can say, like, they discovered that the labyrinths weren't abandoned or something? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a way to phrase it that doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> it's easy to rise, like, they discovered something even more horrifying. They weren't alone. Yeah, 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 do that, do that! Oh, that would be so awesome! Okay. Something even. In the labyrinths, no one can hear you scream. But they can, that's the problem. <laughs> 
you hear screaming all the time. You're like, fuck it, I'm out. It's scary. Yeah, yeah. When you go into that labyrinth that some screaming people run at you, remember? Yeah, and you're like, like no. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Get out of here, you Sadako. <laughs> Oh, so, apparently there's a new Grudge movie that's coming out. Yeah? Yeah, like a new, new one. I want to see it. Is it about that guy who left the Patreon because of Reborn? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Maybe. <laughs> Do we, should we mention that who, who was, the, yeah, no, no, actually that's good. And that's. That's when you can say, like, they couldn't face those people by themselves, or whatever, and yeah, so they enlisted yeah. the help of hunters. But say it fancy. Okay. What's your favorite pig name again? Snuffles. Snuffles? Snuffles? You know the person who named Snuffles is one of our patrons? Who is that? Who named Snuffles? Sapphic plant, Katie. Oh my god! Shout out! So we can see pale figures and strange Snuffles. Maybe the leverage. You can iterate. This is the problem. Neither of us can be serious anymore. No, no, we can. We did it for the Ashen Hollow video. It was beautiful. Yeah, but he wrote that, and that took a very long time. <laughs> it's okay. We can, we can do it. We're bimbofying each other. <laughs> Whenever I hear the word bimbo, do you know who I picture? Uh, the Nameless King. No, Thor from the Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. So adorable. Yeah. I love it when he was just like, oh, I made some designs. It was something really stupid. <laughs> 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 uh, he makes yeah. his own spin off. <laughs> no, I, I like when, when they're like the phones ring and he just really casually goes, it's in the fish tank and then just keeps working. <laughs> Uh, so that and chubby thor are my favorite uh character interpretations by that actor i'm I'm glad chris hemsworth has managed to like avoid his beefcake type casting and embrace his destiny as a comic relief himbo yes yeah yeah Yeah. Because I've, like, you probably don't, like, you you won't know, but, like, I've been, like, subjected to Chris Hemsworth for about 20 years now. <laughs> because he w- he started off in a soap opera. And he was, like, the hunk in that before, like, before he was Thor. Okay. There was a soap opera and it's set partially on a beach. So he was, like, <laughs> the hot guy who goes surfing and has all these shots of him with his shirt off going, hey. <laughs> and everyone was, okay, he's just, like... Like the the beefcake who's gonna like go nowhere after this, but like no, he's actually a really good actor. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He makes the first two Thor movies watchable. Yeah, and that's no main feat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. Um. human figures and strange animals roam the labyrinth. Yeah, Rome. Okay, exploring the labyrinth, the scholar discovered they were not alone. Pale human figures and strange animals roamed the corridors. So now you can say like something like they realized they couldn't take on those things by themselves. Yeah, um, um, well, no, but it, they wouldn't even be that. They wouldn't have tried to take them on in the first place. Oh, they didn't even try. They were like, okay, we're out. Can you just imagine <laughs> like the Mikolash trying to like fist fight a werewolf. It's just like <laughs> slapping it and holding his face. So we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just imagined like the scholars and Willem like exploring the labyrinth. And one of the scholars is like, you know what? I can take him on. So he runs off the frame. But the next thing you see is a bunch of blood splattered on all the scholars. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is why they got the giant on the football scholarship? <laughs> I knew we hired that guy for some reason. <laughs> Let me go, Willem. I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> Good. Uh, 
Okay. Um, no, no. Oh, Corvo's playing with my parchment paper. He went on the table where he's not supposed to go. But I love him, so it's okay. Fine, you can be on the table, little guy. It's like seeking protection from the creatures of the labyrinth. From the people of Yarnum. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, well, that, that's cool. <laughs> it's all right. It's not your best work. <laughs> no, I mean that's cool that they sought help from the people of Yarnum. But the first hunter they hired was German, right? Well, we'll say like a group called the Hunters, maybe the Hunters of Yarnum. I'm specialized in uh, the hunters of you. The problem is the hunters hunt, and they end up with the word hunt too many times in the one sentence. Well, we'll write it out, and we'll see how we can change it. Um, we'll say like an old man called. He wasn't always an old man, Richie. Yeah, but if we say this was like, this would have been like twenty. Maybe he was a middle-aged man. Well, how old do you think he is now? Now, now? I don't know. Yeah, in, in game. 100? Okay, so he was 80, according to you, at this point. <laughs> That's quite old. No. <laughs> no, but also remember how he fights you and kicks your ass? Yeah, but that's like young German, like he goes back in time. Like the version in the wheelchair is very old. Okay. So he looks like he's like maybe, if he's had a hard life, he could be like 60-ish. So maybe he's like 40 during this. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Like, I would say a man called German, not an old man called German. Okay. A dude uh, called German. The Hunters of Yarnum. The Hunters of Yarnum. But we don't know that German founded the Hunters of Yarnum. He's called the first hunter. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's his name. I thought it was the first hunter because he was the first hunter who was hired by Birkenwart. So it was just like, you know, senior research assistant. Senior research. <laughs> That's his third phase. German <laughs> senior research assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, assistant regional manager. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Mikhailash, director of the Center for Sustainable Paving. The people of Yarnum were no strangers uh, to that's, beasts. That's, that's what they say about Canehurst. We'll say the people oh. of Yarnum were well acquainted. With these beasts? Well, how do you know it was these beasts? What other beasts do you think they were? <laughs> I don't know! They're just another unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are the odds? <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> we'll just say the people of Yarn and well acquainted. On them. A beast hunting agency? What agency? <laughs> yeah, like a you, beast. You call him. <laughs> Who are you gonna call? The hunters. A doll for receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh god, the hunters are just the Ghostbusters, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, there's like German, and then there's like Archibald, who's like the the smart guy who invents stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're thinking to heart, Richie. Like I think, like we need to let go, and like whatever comes into our mind. Okay. 
So what do you want? They established a group, an association? Um, do you want maybe a guild? I don't know what to call it. Yeah, a guild! That's a good one. A guild is in the Mandalorian. Okay, good. Hang on. Was they all acquainted with beasts? Already well acquainted with these beasts. Yana Malongo established a guild of beast hunters founded in life. Led by a, we'll say led by a one-leg man. But wait, didn't he lose his leg after being abducted by the Moon Presence? Well, no, because you see the, the fishing Hamlet flashback, and he's got the one leg in there. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, this is, like, they... In the trailer for the Old Hunters, they show German walking off toward the Hamlet, and it, he's got the wooden leg there. Uh-huh. But okay. All right. I wouldn't trust I'll, I'll it. Go, I'll, go, I'll go for you. Right. Yeah. I think that in the base game, they are implying that he lost his leg when the Moon Presence grabbed him. Yeah. But then in the DLC, they retcon it to, like, you lose your leg because of beasthood. And having looked at the cut stuff, I think that is that was the initial idea. And it was... Okay. You know I, about the no, arms I, in Sekiro? Have we talked about this? Because, like, in, in Sekiro, they make a point of, like, there's ritual removal of your arm. Mm -hmm. Because, like, basically, if you kill too many people, you, you, you tip over into becoming this thing called the Shura. So it's kind of like becoming blood drunk. And that's what the sculptor was going to become. So Ishin cut his arm off to stop him killing any more people. And I'm pretty sure that's what, like, Bloodborne's getting at. But, like, because in all the cut stuff, there's all these people with one leg. And it's like, it's been a, it's like a thing going back to Kanehurst times. So. Yeah, I, rem I remember. And even in the in the finished game, there are those knights in Kanehurst that have one leg, right? Yeah, yeah, which I used to think was a glitch. But it's it's real. Okay. <laughs> okay, so well, then like, we have yeah. to... Yeah, but if we if we say that he's one legged, then we actually have to elaborate why he's one legged. Uh, but actually, no, <gasps> Richie, you just gave me a vision. Oh my yeah. god, ah, oh, this is a strong one. I've never had a stronger vision as of yet. Ooh, I had to hold my forehead. What? We don't have to elaborate why he's one legged in this one. Do you know why? Do you want to make one about Garmin? We're gonna make one about Garmin. Do I have to be Garmin in it? If you want. I don't want to, but I predict I will anyway. <laughs> That's the attitude. Yeah, perfect. Let's go. One legged man. Good. Ooh, this is getting exciting. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Nirnum had long ago established a guild of beast hunters led by a one legged man called Garmin. Do you want to change it to maybe like a wounded man called German? No, 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 no. Okay. One legged man. Because that will come in later when we talk about German and specifically explain why he has a one leg. Do you want to come up with like all these possible explanations about what happened? <laughs> like what? I don't know, like he was getting on a bus and missed. <laughs> Lawn mowing accident. <laughs> Tried out some war, <laughs> didn't work. <sighs> okay. What are you going to teach me more fetishes, Richie? I know you've been talking to Kyan, but this is a, it's a dangerous the two of you being together like this. What are you thinking, Richard? Tell me. You're thinking very hard. No, I'm just trying to think about how to phrase the like one legged thing. Well, we can leave it like that for now and we okay. can let okay. we don't, you know, yeah. we can go back to it later if we need it. Yeah. Should we mention Maria here? Yes, that's good, yeah. What do you want to describe Maria as? Is apprentice Maria. But do you want to call her like, you know, uh, an aristocratic woman or an ageless woman or something? No, no, people know who Maria is. We, 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 but they, well, why are we doing any of this? It's like, they know. 
No. Okay. Well, okay. You have to think about this from a perspective of we're doing it from sort of the perspective of like Willem as things are um, like un- yeah. enveloping. Yeah. Okay. Well, do do you, do you want to call Mar- Do you want to specify that Marie is part of aristocracy? Not yet. No, I don't think so. Because it's not. I think like it's important to just say like who they were, like German and Maria, but we don't have to go into details about them. Well, can we just say like his apprentice, a noble woman called Maria? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think part of it is going deep, but also not too deep. Like, like everybody knows who Maria is. Everybody knows who German is, you know? I still have no idea what this is supposed to. This is like Bloodborne, but from the perspective of Willem, but then also, oh, everyone knows what that is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like. So um, he knew. He was like stalking her on social media beforehand. <laughs> kind of, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. exactly, okay. yes, yeah. Or there's like a brochure that the hunters gave out and it's got like <laughs> biographies of them. It's like yes. Maria's CV is on there. Yeah, well, it is, she is in the guild, right? Is it even a guild? It's a guild now. It's a hunter's guild. Canon. It's a union. They're going to (laughs) strike. Oh my god, Maria went on strike and Ludwig killed her. Bro. So you think Ludwig's like a scab? He's like crossing (laughs) the picket line. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Maria, Maria... Noble woman from the castle of Kynehurst. Should we call her like a foreign noble woman to specify that she's not from Yarnum, but she's from Kynehurst? Yeah. Okay. A guild of beast hunters led by a one-legged man called German and his apprentice, a foreign noble woman called Maria. Yeah. Whom Ludwig later killed because he was totally jealous. Was he jealous of Maria? Because she was going to take over after German was disappeared or whatever, and he was like, I'm jealous. Oh, I'm going to take over. I feel like you don't quite understand Ludwig's relationship to everyone else, and I, I don't know where to begin because you've constructed an extremely <laughs> elaborate Ludwig <laughs> headcanon. But... <laughs> So now what? You are writing it, I don't know! Do you think this is how Rise of Skywalker was written? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> alright, now what? <laughs> like, you're writing it, JJ, and he's like, yep. <laughs> Let's go back to my mystery box. <laughs> it contains a gold turd. Yeah, so no, so this contains everything I wanted to say. Um, okay, so this already contained in that. Okay, so now what I want to move on to is to say that Willem and the scholars of Bergenworth, under the protection of the hunters, explored the labyrinth. How do I say it fancy? Okay. Um, under protection... Oh, that's beautiful! Oh, I like this! I'll put all of this text on the mug. Hello? You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm just... uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm lost in thought. (laughs) Okay. So now I want to say that during their tomb exploration, they encountered slugs, and slugs were a clear sign of the left-behind Great Watch. But they don't know about the Great Ones. But that's what the description said. It said that it's a sign of the Great Ones. So they found the slug, they turned it around, and they were like, oh, <laughs> it says here. <laughs> they were like, it's, they picked up the slug, and they're like, uh, what, what's, what's going on? Why are you here? And the slug turned to them. And it said, I cannot tell a lie. We are the families of the Great Ones. <laughs> Can we do that?
that? Can we say that? They picked up a slug and then the slug <laughs> This is all the fault of that comment that's like, she doesn't take it seriously. I'm like, bitch, you want to see not taking it seriously? Regretting saying that. Okay, so how would you phrase this? Well, I think they found the blood first. Oh, you think they found the blood first? Look, okay, what yeah. is the separate item that says that Bergen were stumbled okay. upon something? I just here's, don't remember here's, how it's here's, Okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem, right? The item descriptions are written in, like, the time that the game is currently set. Mm -hmm. So when it says that the slugs were the signs of the Great Ones... They know that in retrospect. Oh. But at the time, they would have just seen the slugs and not understood what they were. Then the more they explored, the more they were like, oh, these slugs are like the left behind signs of something else. Mm -hmm. mm. Can I tell a lie? Oh, I can't. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, thank you, Richie. Give me a sec, I'll grab some water and I'll okay, do it. Okay, I will do the same. Okay. Hello. Hi, welcome back. Thank you, it's lovely to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming back on this program, Richard. Well, as long as you take it a bit more seriously. This <laughs> Do you think they encountered the blood first? Um, it's not clear, but I think they probably did just because, like, old blood is easier to come across. So, do you know what item description I'm thinking of? Like, it's Sorry, the one that head, says... my headphone fell out. I'm back now. <laughs> There's an item description that says something like, Bergenworth people stumbled upon something. Which one is that? An epiphany. That's the choir. The Augur of Ibriatus mentions like them doing something with the, the Augur and that leading to the choir's founding. So the choir stumbled upon an epiphany very suddenly and by accident. I feel like there's another one. No, check out Augur of Ibriatus. Augur of Ibriatus, okay, okay. Because okay. that mentions that like they were in the labyrinth and then that like that led to them going deeper and that led to the choir. It was like the discovery of the Augur. Okay, and it's Squire, not Bergenworth, then. No, no, Bergenworth, it's a Bergenworth thing, and it talks about, like, Bergenworth found this thing, and that ultimately led to the choir. Wait, which which thing is that? Augur of Sorry, I'm so... Yeah, I'm at Augur of Abriatus, and it says, One of the secret rites of the choir, high-ranking members of the Healing Church. You spirits, the invertebrates known to be augurs of the Great Ones to partially summon a Britus. One of the few rites that allow one to directly use the power of the Great Ones and evidence that the choir approached the Eldritch Truth. It doesn't talk about Bergen. Oh, it might be, um... Uh... It might be the Empty Phantasm Shell. 
Oh yeah, I'm confused because you find the auger in um, you find the auger in the lecture hall. That's why I'm associating. Okay. Empty invertebrate that is said to be familiar of a great one. The healing church has discovered a great variety of invertebrate yes, or fat they are, yep. they are called. Shells with sly harbor the arcane power and can be rubbed on weapons. Like, no, I'm thinking, maybe I'm imagining it. I feel like there's an item that says the Bergen were stumbled upon something in the labyrinth. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> but I, I might be imagining it. Hang on, I can, I can do this. There's something that talks about, like, something leading to the establishment of the plan. I just gotta find it. Yeah? I'm starting to wonder if is this like a difference in trans hang on. Yeah, hang on. No, this is what Orgophobriata says when I'm looking at it, right? Maybe this is different different versions. Remnants of the Eldritch Truth uncovered at Bergenworth. Use phantasms to partially summon aban abandoned Embriatus. The initial encounter marked the start of an inquiry into the cosmos from within the old labyrinth and led to the establishment of the choir. Okay, yeah, there are two versions. Okay, I see them now. Oh, were you looking at, like, an unpatched one? Yeah, one of them will be patched and one of them will be unpatched. So I guess that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, what's what? Yeah, it's like I was saying. The initial encounter marked. Okay. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Basically, what happened is that they they moved the auger somewhere else later on. So they just really hastily rewrote the item text to say that, like, oh yeah, Bergenworth found this, but actually it led to the choir. So tell me what happened. They went to the labyrinth. They encountered the blood. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that they encountered the blood before the phantasms, just because if you're going to the labyrinth, you don't find phantasms until you're pretty deep down. So how did they get the blood and those chalice thingies? Or yeah, because you, like, you just find yeah. you find the blood lying around, like the ritual blood. I just assume it's that. Okay, so okay, okay. So how do we phrase that? Um, we found some blood lying around. They found some blood lying around. <laughs> so basically, they go in the labyrinth, they have the hunters, they go in the labyrinth, they stumble upon some blood. Well, no, it's a, like, um... Uh... I'm obsessed with understanding. Believing that the bodies of these strange... Oh, so he says Thumerians, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, I understand what you're saying. Uh, Bergen with also brought back the dead. Yeah, and you could, you could overlay that over, like, someone in the prospect of, like, opening a, um, one of the big, like, coffins. So what do they, they encounter slugs then? Bergen no, I think that's later on. Well, we'll talk about the blood first. Okay, okay. Okay. So then, but then, okay, so now... Is the blood still fresh? Oh, that's a good one. So now I want to say that, uh, basically... So let me remove the slugs from here to the end. Or maybe I'll just put it as a comment to talk about later, maybe. Okay, 17 people like me saying I don't take law seriously either. That's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay, so um, so now I want to say they brought back the blood and they experimented on it, right? Um, well, do we want to talk about the properties of the blood? Oh, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, yeah. But how would they know the properties if they don't experiment? No, we'll just say that it held unique properties in the experiment, exhibited unique properties. I have a visual from that scene from The Thing. Yeah. And they just oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the blood. It was very, it's yeah. pretty. The blood of the people of the labyrinth exhibited unique properties. And. Hang on, began transfusing it. So what is the proof for that? Is it like the Garden of Eyes? 
No, it's the, the metamorphosis runes. Okay, that's what I wrote down later. No, no, it's just the metamorphosis runes say, like, the discovery of blood made the dream of evolution a reality. Yeah. And that's Willem's dream. So, like, Willem's like, oh, at last, like, this blood will allow me to. Okay. Let's see. How can we interpret this sentence, the discovery yeah, of- no, because Willem's the one who says, like, evolution without courage will be our ruin. Courage. Right? Evolution Not is Willem his dream. It's yeah. his student, but his student is saying, Master Willem said this. It's a quote. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah, evolution. But that's the thing evolution without courage. Oh, that's a separate thing. Because it's, it's, it's like evolution with. Like, courage is a bad way of writing it. It's yeah, evolution yeah, that's what without, I mean, like. Um, like, evolution without control, almost. Like, evolution without pity or something. So, yeah, so what is the Japanese translation of that note? It's basically just something like, um, it's, it's like a debased evolution or like a deviant evolution. Because he's like, if we, if we need to evolve in the right way. Passing their bodies in unpredictable ways. Uh, How do we know that the bodies were transformed in unpredictable ways? Look at the metamorphosis runes. I just feel like they're not... Like yeah. the sto- I just- story of the metamorphosis <laughs> rune. Did we not do runes of blood ball? Because no, in my head is when we say something, I'd like to overlay, like, you know, things, but also the text from the game. And I feel like just the discovery of blood made their dream of evolution a reality, metamorphosis and excess deviation that followed were only the beginning. Isn't it... Well, okay, well, what, but metamorphosis and excesses of deviation is the same as saying, like, unpredictable. Because it like okay, so excesses of deviation sorry. sounds like they couldn't. It was like they had no control over it. Can, okay, but can we say like instead of saying transform, can we put met metamorph, morph or something to morph in unpredictable way? But they mean the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but it will tie in with the description. You know what I mean? Do you want to give the viewer the benefit of the doubt that they know that metamorphose and transform are synonyms? <laughs> I feel like maybe it will just, like, click better. (laughs) Well, okay. That sounds unnatural. Hang on, we'll rewrite it. Uh, Causing unpredictable metamorphosis. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But, like, the Garden of Ice, are they part of that unpredictable metamorphosis? No. And there are no examples other than the rune of, like, for example, this happened or that happened. No. You know? What would, for example, <laughs> like you read yeah. the Dark Souls text, where it's just like, <laughs> Sword of the Knight of Astora. For example, <laughs> there was a guy. <laughs> he seemed sketchy. <laughs> I know, I just need to... I don't really know, but I look at it, but it's like, ooh, sketchy. No, I like the first thing that you wrote better. Control Z that shit. I like the first thing better, because it, it was more... You didn't make me change it. No, I just wanted to, you to change transform into morph. All right. To more uh, like, predictable ways. No, because like this, like the way you wrote it here, it gives you a vis- more of a visual, you know? Well, could we say causing an unpredictable metamorphosis in their bodies and minds? Yeah, that's good too. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. This is when Willem's like, we can use this to evolve. So he saw that like some weird shit is happening. You know what? No, and he's like, look, this this makes this makes normies turn into beasts. But I, <laughs> the world's smartest man, know better. Okay. Um, I'm just having, like, I feel like Willem is a little extreme, you know? Well, he is. So it's, yeah. yeah. I guess I didn't see him as that extreme. I felt like 
maybe in my head it was a little like, oh, this was a mistake. But no, he's just like, no, this is good. Let's keep going. <laughs> so how would you say seeing that the blood transformed normies yeah. into beasts? Willem was like, hype. Willem was like, hype. <laughs> <laughs> Willem saw what the Thumerians had done and remembered Tyra Banks' advice to take something and make it his own. Oh my god! Take <laughs> <laughs> the best and make it your own. Can we add that to we write that? We have to, like, you know. I'm not being involved in this after it's written. Who did you say that? Willem remembered <laughs> 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 Tyra Banks. <laughs> Take the best and make it your own. Take the best and make it your own. No, but then you, you said something before he oh, saw. Yeah, he what the Fumerians had done and remembered the words of Tyra Banks. <laughs> Take from the best and make it your own. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna have to put the little slug in here too. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> um, and then what happened? I just uh, parsed the Tyra Banks thing. It's a <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh god oh my god I don't even know what to reply to that <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then what happened? Okay. So this is when he's like, I can evolve people now. Oh, hang on. Prospector opening big coffin. Read that out. Prospector opening big coffin. <laughs> there was a, a sketch uh. that used to be on here called Roger Explosion Secret Agent that, like, the joke was that it was just really badly mm -hmm. made, so the lead actor would randomly yell, like, moves to door, and then walk over to it. <laughs> like, urgently, we need help. Can't really take that seriously. Because I'll be honest, I don't think I quite understood, like, that part of the okay, story from All Willem's right. perspective as well as I thought. So Willem realized realized that he can evolve people. Basically. Um, okay. Uh, um. Uh. Willem saw these meta Willem saw this meta So he thinks more research is required because metamorphosis is unpredictable. Can you like add it? Like, however, due to the unpredictability of I don't know the transformations, more research was you know required yeah. to properly control the yeah. properties of the blood or something. Okay, and then what happened? Well, this is when he starts going further into the labyrinth. Okay, so he goes further into yeah, the labyrinth yeah. still. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So is that where he finds the little slug? Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh my god, okay, okay. Hello, Willem! I found me! A helpful slug in the labyrinth! <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Uh, so like prohibiting further experimentation with the blood. Labyrinth searching for signs. Oh, so Great Ones is a name Willem gave them? Well, it's just what they call it. Like, it, it's it's just like a, a term they use for like it, it like the problem with great one is it's it's very Lovecraftian because it's not when he talks about like the great old ones, but the Japanese is pretty much just like adva- like superior beings basically. Okay. So Willem just sort of designates like everything beyond a certain point. Great ones feels like he's looking for Cthulhu, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Prohibiting further experimentation with the blood, Boone sends scholars and hunters deeper into the labyrinth, searching for signs of the advanced organisms will turn great ones. But how did he know there would be like advanced organisms there? He was hoping basically that the blood evolved. Yeah, he's like you. You, if you were smart enough, you could control this. Okay. Yeah. So he was just like betting on it. He figured they must exist because he found the ruins. Okay. Oh, hang on. Well, yeah. Okay, hang on. Uh, searching for signs of the advance of the being of the signs of the uh, um. I'm trying to be like he's trying to find like things they haven't seen before. Maybe you can say like previously unseen organisms. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking un- of like unknown unseen creatures. Yeah, previous. Yeah. So after you tweeted out all that nonsense, I got a new follower. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's beautiful. Is it Miyazaki? <laughs> no. Actually, coach him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I want you. I want you to write the dialogue for my new game. I'll just give you the story. You and Richie can explain it to each other, and we'll just motion cap you, and you can be like all the the calls people have. <laughs> so, like Norman Reedus walks in, he presses a button, and there's like a chiral gram of us. <laughs> And I'm trying to get to the explain. You're just like Tyra Banks says, <laughs> "Girl, girl." <laughs> You're just like, well, this is all new to me. <laughs> okay, Richard, focus. Um, prohibiting for now. What happens? Um. Well, that's when they find the the um left behind great the August. Okay, okay. Most important part. Let's write about that. Okay. Did they find slugs yet? Um. What are they finding? Our little slug. We'll just we'll come up with something like I don't know, miles below the earth or something. Yes, yes, yes. Good miles below the earth. Miles below the earth. Miles below the earth. Hang on, I don't know why you just tweeted something. Is it cool? Uh, it's a Bulma from a Dragon Ball dressed as possibly in the Luftwaffe. I'll ask her later. I don't understand anything you just said. Cool. I'll go. This is like <laughs> when we were talking to Philomena. And then <laughs> okay, then he went, by the way, I do know what Echo the Dolphin is, just out of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> uh, Unearthing and not turning the grave is a thing from Dark Souls, so I'm just like throwing that in because it's Yeah? Oh that's cute. But it's really cute. You don't know what I mean. I think it's cute that you're taking a reference from Dark Souls and putting it in here. 
<laughs> what did they do? What did they 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 find? Expedition. Expedition. Yeah, okay. like we're getting like one sentence per like you start laughing and then we have a digression. <laughs> so what's this one about? No, just imagine the little slug. <laughs> Can't wait to get to the little slug, Richie. That's what I love for. With the little slug we came up with like half an hour ago and now it's like I live for him. Yes. Yes. Just the little slug have like really big eyes and it's like ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cute. Do you know what Ike sent me yesterday? Oh, this cannot be a one. Do I want to know, or is this like... Okay, Ike randomly, like... <laughs> he was like, Hi, I randomly drew this. You can use it for a video if you want. I'll send it to you. Maybe it's from a game, I don't know. How much recording time do we have on Zencaster? Uh, unlimited. Jesus. Yeah. Forget the fence. I thought, I thought I had it out. <laughs> Damn it. Well, Richie, we can, do you have to go? We can uh, end. No, I don't. I, I, Continue another day. I don't really have anywhere to be. Okay, did it appear? Did the drawing appear? No, Discord is still opening. Mm -hmm. I have to navigate to Sinclair Law, press the button and wait. Is it still opening? Yes. God damn it. No, it's opened. I can see your name. I have the cursor over it. I've clicked it. Now I need to wait for it to actually respond. In the meantime, here's some waiting music. <laughs> <laughs> Your call is important to us. Thank you for holding. We'll be right with you. <laughs> okay, I clicked it, but then because you sent me something, everyone's icon changed position, so I actually opened like the wrong window. So now I have to click you again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am your personal complaint manager. <laughs> I will now give you, give you a docket. <laughs> wait, it's opening. No, I don't have to wait for the picture to appear. <laughs> oh, it's Aldrich. Is it Aldrich? I think it's Aldrich. I don't, I don't oh no, might not be. It's a it's like oh, it's like a sugar. I think. I don't know. It's beautiful, but now when you when you talk about the slug, that's what I picture. That's not very cute, though. It's what do you mean? Look how cute it is. Look at its eyes. Which well, it's got a whole, it's got a lot of eyes. Which ones am I looking at? <laughs> the ones on the face. What about the other ones on on its body and the mouth that's also on its body? Uh, it's just art. It's just trying to express itself. They're just tattoos. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but isn't it cute? Look at how he's looking at you. He's like, hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, so let's return to the document. So <laughs> You're going to have to open the document now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, according to our test, Discord has closed, so we are closing the complaint. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I am not authorized to actually fix the problem. But I will escalate your complaint to somewhat important. We will get back to you in three to five business days.
Bergen Ruth Expedition, Campbell Ford, Strange and Very the Brits. We can name them, right? Like Phantasms. No, they call them the Phantasms. They call them the yeah, Phantasms. Yeah, hang on, I'm just gonna... Well, can go to, we I'm just gonna go to Blood Blood Rookie and look up what the gifts of which time is. Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How much of this is gonna actually make it in? Because this is like what the fuck even is it? It's gonna be on Patreon, so a lot. God. It's good it's already like part three. <sighs> this is me trying to close a tab. I'm just gonna wait for it to actually close now. That's pretty hard. Okay, it's closed. Now the other tab's got to open. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Um, what are we? What are we? Strange looking for? invertebrates who which? Is the cute slug the ogre of Ibruitus? Oh my! <gasps> I just died. <laughs> Finally free. <laughs> <laughs> Let the community free <laughs> society for relief. <laughs> Sinclair <laughs> dies from happiness, imagining a cute slug. <laughs> the ogre of a <laughs> Almost crying right now. It's so. Um. <sighs> okay, what is our train of thought, Richie? Um, would it be like they allowed contact with, but we don't really know what yet. But how did they know it allowed contact with anything? Okay, well, we'll we're gonna partially like bullshit here, but we'll say like invertebrates are that. Upon contact, uh, I I imagine that like the, they're sort of like taking magic mushrooms, but like you touch them and you sort of like go into a weird state and you can like see through time. Yeah. Okay. So so write that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Induced altered psychological states. Like, how does that translate into like meditating and like? Because they start. That's what. That's what forces. That's what makes them think we need to look into these slugs more. Well, can we add that in the sentence, okay. like, or next, next sentence. sentence? So they find the slugs. They touch him, and the slugs talk to them. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. "We should study this." <laughs> oh my god! Okay, if this little slug could talk, what would would it tell you upon contact? If you ask nicely, Ibruitus will appear. But you need to give him a baby. <laughs> he will answer your questions. He is available in person, but if that is too difficult, you can contact him on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, write all that shit down. Oh. If you have that many brutus who appear, but you need to give him a baby. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> um, you can meet him in person, but if that <laughs> you can't come, he will visit you on Skype. <laughs> he can meet him in person? Yes. <laughs> but if he can't come, he'll visit you on Skype. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to like, like. Okay, well, this part we will do where it's like you'll do it in that voice, so maybe it's not quite understandable. I feel like we need to make just like the complete history of Bloodborne, but this, <laughs> and just call yeah. it like stupid Bloodborne. <laughs> so Willem believed that the expansion of human consciousness would allow them to control the changes brought about by the blood. But the invertebrate, which he called Phantas, were not strong enough on their own. Willem ordered further Willem? exploration. Again, they're exploring? Yeah, Willem ordered further exploration. 
sounds like a lot of exploring. It's, well, it's a labyrinth. <laughs> Just imagine you're there. Like, There's a lot of exploring. Well, have you got anything else to do? Do you need a manual written? <laughs> can, can I write the manual explaining how to use an auger of Ibriatus? Oh my god, yeah, that would be my job. I love writing manuals. <laughs> Are you Carol? <laughs> I'll write a manual about how to use all these runes we found. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. And then what happened? So this would then be like, this is where the Hamlet happens. Okay, so how did they find out about the Hamlet? We don't actually know. Hang on. Um, do you want to put the stuff about our eyes not opening in this? Okay, okay, fine, yeah. Okay, so I'm not strong enough. The growth of his consciousness. What to say the expansion. Galaxy brain. He's a literal galaxy brain. <laughs> the changes brought about by the invertebrates were not powerful enough on their own. Okay, that's good. And so we can just say somehow he stumbled on fishing hemorrhage? Yes, really. And somehow he stumbled on fishing hemorrhage. Where do we think the fishing hamlet was? I kind of assumed it was somewhere far away. And. Yeah. It's just like, you know, word of mouth got to like Bergenworth, where it's like, hey, apparently there are yeah. these guys that summoned this great one. And it's just like, really <laughs> weird, bro. I heard you're into that stuff. You may want to check it out. I'm just imagining them like going to the hamlet with a map and they're like getting lost. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Kerman's there, the map's upside down. <laughs> Maria's like, he never asks for directions. <laughs> Just ask the locals, Gurman. No, fine. It's over here, there's a shortcut. <laughs> Okay, but like, what do you? Why? Where do you think it was? Well, um, do you want to say like the Bergenworth researchers discovered it or heard about? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. like, I honestly think they just heard about it, and they're like, I guess we'll check yeah. it out. Bergenworth researchers village on the coast near Yarn. Do you think he said the hunters and the scholars? I think he sent the scholars there because it specifically says that it specifically says that the skulls of the people in the hamlet were studied. Search for eyes. So yeah, the hunters wouldn't do. Yeah, that. they would have cut. They would have cut the heads off and looked inside. Yeah, because in my head, I was also not sure because I'm like, did they bring those heads back to the to Bergenworth and that's where the scholars studied them? Yeah, it would have been both. Both. Okay, so then in that case, yeah, the scholars and the hunters arrived there. Yeah. But it's just like, it could almost go either way, because it could be that the scholars and the hunters are like, hey, what's up, everyone? We're just here to talk to Kaz. And then the villagers are like, I think that's what happened. Hey, Kaz, come over. And then they kill everyone, they kill Kaz. But it could also yeah. be that, like, the villagers, I mean, the scholars and the hunters go to the village. And the villagers are like, ooh, we don't know about you. So the hunter's like, oh, we'll make you talk. So they start massacring people. And then in an attempt to sort of defend themselves, maybe the fishing people summon Kaz for help. But the hunters kill Kaz anyway, you know? Yeah. I, I prefer the idea that they, the hunters were like, they were like welcomed there and then betrayed them. Because that seems to be like this, that's a recurring thing. Like, it also seems to have happened with Kanehurst, but like the church were welcomed and then betrayed. Right. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, yeah. Okay. That's not even. The scholars and hunters were okay. the village where they were. Okay. So, Gurman himself accompanying the scholars to the village where they were welcomed by the inhabitants of themselves. 
cops to steal my priestess back at the card from the mission from Andrew Walker who's in the future of all the mission school. On the orders of the room, the trip decides to get the cost of the court. The back of the car and then the bodies of the future is like the other hundred and seventy. It's nine and five is gone. You sound like one of the Hamlet women. <laughs> He's like whispering about cause. Oh, snap. How long have we been recording for? It's like two hours or something. Oh, shit. Three hours, eight minutes, bro. We can finish this and then reconvene another day. Reconvene this extremely formal, well-structured <laughs> discussion. Yes. Okay, most valuable to Willem was the remains of Koss herself. Was she taken to Bergenworth as well? No, I think it's just the child. That's pretty, uh... But wasteful. It's like, well, it's like you have a whole great one. Like, why would you not take the great one back with you? Well, it's possible because, like, we don't know exactly, like, the problem with the Hamlet is like it's it's a nightmare. Yeah. Also, how they would have to have like a carriage or something like equipped with, with the Great One. Maybe they went there by foot. They just tied it to the roof of their car. <laughs> so horrible. Uh, okay. The body of her child was returned to Bergenworth. Okay, so this goes with, I'll just paste, um, I think this is good, so I'll paste this that will go on screen. So this is from the, I think this is directly from the guide, like if you scroll down, um, yeah. where it says, the raid left many of the Hamlet residents and their guardian, great one caused dead. In retribution, the remaining villagers laid a curse of blood upon the hunters and their descendants. Yeah. And so we could actually just like insert this quote. Guy, it's not the game, it's not canon. <laughs> okay, so this is how this section will end. Yeah. And I think you can you can go. You've been here long enough. Oh thank you. you thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um so today's class is over. Yeah. So yeah, and then I'll insert the fishing priest dialogue here, and the women dialogue before that a bit. But Wait, and remember Maria's dialogue. What's her dialogue? When she says the exact same thing in the exact same voice, but it's Maria. <laughs> Richie, are you saying we should do like a different lore in each character? No. I feel like that's what you're saying. You're said. saying that and you're looking for approval. <laughs> okay. So that's it for today. And next time we'll continue. And uh, we will have to talk about what I'd like to basically, how I'd like to end this is with like Willem, you know, gets the cord and what he uses it for. And then like everything is good. But then turns out Lawrence is like, listen, I'm tired of waiting, bro. I'm out. And then eventually Mikolesh is like, I'm also out. I'm going to do my own thing. And then like things go well, right? Is it going to be a really elaborate shit, bro? Like, and then Willem touched the cord and finally understood the knowledge of the universe. And then it's like, baby Yoda. <laughs> baby Yoda. <laughs> I'm getting it apart, baby Yoda. Well, now that you said it, that's how we're going to end it. <laughs> okay. But I didn't think of that. But yeah, but then it's going to be like, well, Willem was like, whatever, I don't care. I don't need you people. And then somehow, for some reason, have his school get sucked into the nightmare. And then Mikolaj summons the red moon. And it's just like, you know how everything basically collapses Yeah. in the end. Do you think maybe he's not even like half in the nightmare? He's just pretending to get out of like responsibility. Like people who claim to have amnesia. <laughs> Maybe. I have no recollection of that event. <laughs> and he's like pretending he's got like, oh yeah, I have um, a terrible asthma condition so I can't be moved from Bergenworth to stand trial. 
It's an Australian businessman who did that. That's immediately what I was thinking of. Oh, he, I had he, a feeling he, it was based on he scammed. He scammed a bunch of people out of, like, millions of dollars and then fled to Spain. Uh-huh. And then said, oh, yeah, I have a um, an asthmatic condition that prevents me from leaving Spain to stand trial. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty intense. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Can't leave the balcony. <laughs> yeah, he, he locked it so we can't be served. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Richie. Today was very, very informative. Like how you're, you're now like back announcing this as if it's an episode. Say bye, Richie. Bye, Richie. Next time on all the screams that followed. Mikolash is. I bring your notes here. Mikolash is salty. <laughs> yes. Maybe called upon cause a little too hard. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, and that's that's why the she like bugging cause, and then she's just like shut up, and then she just <laughs> sucks the whole building into the nightmare. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. How did Mikolash get the like to? Hole stuck in the nightmare if he's in if he's in Yahargol. What? His when is he in Yahargol? What? That's his what goal. Just... He's uh, physically been in Yahargol the whole time. No, but after at some point, right? He wasn't wasn't he in Bergenworth before, and then he went to yeah. Yahargul? He was at Bergenworth. He left, but then he didn't. He did all his weird shit at Yahargol. He wouldn't have been the one who got the lecture hall sucked into the nightmare. No, but maybe he got it sucked Not into there. the nightmare and then he left. How did he leave? He he left after that. If he's sucked in the night, he just walked out the door. Imagine he's outside the building. He's like, Cause, ah. <laughs> and the building gets sucked out and he's outside and he's like, oops, okay, I'm going to go now, bye. You know, he wasn't in the building when it got sucked out. So he's outside and he calls Cos and then Cos takes the building behind him. Yes. And he just like turns around awkwardly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> then he goes and talks to Willow and he's desperately trying to like block his view. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the situation. It. Yes. <laughs> What's behind you, Mikolaj? Oh, nothing of interest. <laughs> Have you considered facing this direction? <laughs> He's like uh, steamed hams. Yeah, steamed hams. I mean, it's Nicholas trying to pretend the like Jawal hasn't been sucked into the nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, do you have a better explanation why it got sucked into the nightmare? Um, it might have been amygdala. Okay, but why? Because it leads to the nightmare frontier where the amygdala is. Yeah, because Mikolash was like, Amygdala! And it's like, shut up, Mikolash. And it takes the building. Like that, yeah, Amygdala! <laughs> he like walks in and does little finger guns. Amygdala! Because <laughs> the great ones are sympathetic in spirit. <laughs> They'll answer if you tag them. If you add them. <laughs> yeah. What is the yeah? That's all. That's all the game is. It's just Mikolash adding like a celebrity until they reply.
Well, considering the amount of shit we get normally. <laughs> do you want me here talking about Judith Butler? Probably not. <laughs>